I want to talk to you about tyres. My God! Jesus! Because it doesn't matter if you drive something sensible, like this lot over here, or whether you drive something fancy, like the Maserati over there. Tyres and tyre pressures are crucial to your safety. Oh my God! Which is why in this video today, we're going to use these two test cars to demonstrate why you should absolutely be checking your tyre pressures and why you should never buy part ones. Whee! So we've got two identical Mazda MX-5s and they're both equipped with a scrubbed in set of Devante DX640 sports tyres. Now these are pretty good and they're actually developed in the UK. So handily, we booked in some slippery British weather. But this white Mazda here has its tyre pressure set wildly wrong compared to what the manufacturer recommends. Yeah, oh flipping heck. Whereas the blue car over there will have its pressure set correctly. And we're gonna be doing two tests. The first is a braking test from motorway speeds and the second will be a handling test. Okay, so we are in the Mazda MX-5 with the wrong tyre pressure set. And I've got a brand new set of Devantes, which I have scrubbed in before you ask, but the tyre pressures are set at 20 PSI all round, which is nine PSI lower than the manufacturer's recommended level for this Mark III MX-5. So we're running at a level that many people might not realise is actually dangerously low because the tyres look fine on the outside, they don't look low, and this car doesn't have a pressure gauge warning system on it. So it actually isn't telling me that there's anything wrong right now. Now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around onto our start finish straight and accelerate up to 60 miles per hour and at the start line I'm going to hit the brakes and we're going to see how quickly this thing can stop and then we're going to do a rinse and repeat with the car with the correct tyre pressures. Right, off we go. Let's get her up to 60 miles per hour which is of course countryside speed not motorway speed. I actually just went out now and realised I couldn't actually hit 70 in our little MX-5 didn't quite have the grunt, so we're calling it 60. We're in third gear, 60 mile an hour. Let's hold at 60 and brake, clutch brake. Oh. oh, all right, you know, that was pretty impressive, but the ABS was working over time. Right, I'm gonna stop the car on the spot here, drop two cones down so we can mark where it is, and then we're gonna rinse and repeat. We've gone to 40 PSI all round, which is 11 PSI above the manufacturer's recommended level, because I wanted to see what will happen when we overinflate tires. I know fewer people will overinflate tires than underinflate them, but occasionally I have jumped in cars and I've noticed that they're not set correctly. So this is just to demonstrate why those manufacturers have a recommended level. Right, let's see what it's like. Right, up to 60 miles per hour, come on. Come on, little Mazda. Right, up to 60 now, hold it at 60. Here's the line, bang on the brakes, on the clutch. Oh, interesting. We basically stopped a bit ahead. That is interesting. So underinflated potentially is worse. Okay, let's see what it's like when it's correctly inflated. So this car has 29 PSI all round, which is recommended by Mazda for the Mark III. I guess it's gonna stop earlier, I don't know. Let's see, let's get up to 60. Okay, that's 60, here's the white line, and... Oh my God! Woo! <laughs> have we stopped ahead? Oh yes, we absolutely have, there's no question about that. That is definitely, it's probably more than a meter actually, which can make all the difference. If your lorry or child is here and you stop here, that's gonna make the world a difference. I'm not surprised, of course, the correctly inflated pressures are obviously gonna be the ones that perform the best. And I think, well, I'm a bit surprised with the overinflated tires stopping earlier, but I think I know what's happening there. I think potentially what's happened is because the tire was overinflated, it was obviously ballooning a little bit, but with the load on the car as I hit the brakes, perhaps it was pushing it back and giving us almost a full contact patch. Whereas I think what's happened with the underinflated tire is perhaps when I've hit the brakes, it's actually pushed the middle of the tire up and taken some contact patch away. And obviously we still got a greasy surface as well. So the tread blocks maybe not being in the right place is gonna make a world of difference. I'm happy to see that the scientists are correct because correct pressures seem to stop you the fastest. And now we're gonna see if the same is true when I'm out driving around the track, we're gonna do a handling test. So now we're doing things in reverse because there is a massive rain cloud on its way. So we want to make sure we do this test where the circumstances are the same. So I'm now running in the car with the correct tire pressures and we're out on our drying circuit just to see what it's like. There's good grip, really good grip. So far, there's not much to comment on actually on there being anything other than just good grip. And I mean, 
that's not surprising. These are the correct pressures at 29 PSI. Let's see if I can aggravate the car through this turn and just see how it acts with a bit of oversteer. Yeah, really nice and composed. It's just a nice slide, and then you can feel the tires biting into the ground. You feel them doing their job, basically. Yeah, just on the greasy stuff as well, it sort of just begins to slide, but it's nice and progressive. These Devante tires actually work quite well with this MX-5. <laughs> you can do a little bit of a slide if you want, but it's very easy to bring the car back into line. Brake, turn. Yeah, that's so much grip. That's a lot of grip. Yeah. I think we can conclude that the correct pressures feel right, at least for a couple of laps of rocking them anyway. <laughs> okay, now I'm in the other MX-5 and the tyre pressures are 40 PSI all round. So let's see what it's like. Oh, straight away, I've got understeer, oversteer. Let's see what it's like at high speed. I'm a bit nervous. Ooh, high speed with the wrong tyre pressures. Ooh. Oh my God. Yeah, that definitely wants to... Feels almost a bit pointier and then quite a bit snappy on me there. Here it's a bit wet. Oh God. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, oh flipping heck. Yeah, yeah, that is much, much bitier. That is bite you in the backside and throw you in a hedge territory. Woo! Yeah, yeah, okay. That is very, very slippery. Very little aggravation and the back end just wants to come around. So if you're out on the road and you've got your tire pressure set too high and you have to make a quick adjustment or you have to take evasive action, well, this is gonna happen. So I think it's pretty clear that that narrowed contact patch of the overinflated tire has taken away some grip. Oh my God. Yep, yep, that's a lot of grip gone. Woo -hoo -hoo. <sighs> okay, that's science for you. What about the underinflated tire? We're back in our white MX-5, but the pressures are set at a very squidgy 20 PSI. I say very squidgy because I can see the tire wall looks thinner on the ground, looks compressed. So what's it going to be like in turn one? Oh, ah. it's good grip. Do you know what? There's a lot of grip. It feels not dissimilar to when the tires were correctly inflated, interestingly. Yeah, this feels indistinguishable from the correctly inflated tires, which is interesting. What about over this water here, which scares me a bit? Oh, oh big breakaway. Okay, that's interesting. That is interesting. On the dry though, the grip is good. On the wet, it breaks away quick. This last hairpin is damp. It has been all day. So let's see what it's like. I mean, it does a power slide, but there's definitely a lot more grip than there was with the overinflated tire. Definitely. Well, that was fun, but also very telling. Uh, I am not surprised at all to learn that overinflated tires are by far the lowest grip option of all three, but I'm a bit surprised to see how well these underinflated tires did on the dry section. Although I do know some race teams often run with slightly lower pressures than you expect. But I think what was most telling was the fact that as soon as I hit damp patches on our circuit, there was no grip. I mean, it was like full grip to zero grip and it was actually quite scary at moments. So by far, the best and safest setup is to have your tire pressure set correctly. I am relieved that that's the result we came to because that's what we expected. And I'm happy to tell you that you should absolutely check your tire pressures all the time, especially before long journeys. And there's another thing. Sometimes Brits like to buy part worns or used tires. And while okay, sometimes that isn't a bad deal. These are actually just nicely worn down tires. Other times it can be very, very dangerous, just like running the wrong pressures. And I've got two tires here to show you why. This one has had a shoddy repair. You can't really miss it, so you might argue, well, I would have spotted that one. But this tire down here, it's not until you look inside that you can see that it actually had a repair. And while, okay, some repairs are fine, you're putting your trust in someone. And when you're doing 70 mile an hour on the roads with your kids in the back or when you've got the car fully loaded, you're trusting that that repair is a good one. And don't get me started on all the other types of damage that can be hidden inside a tire. I think the message is clear. It doesn't matter what you drive, make sure you check your tire pressures and please don't go buying part worn.